have one of my favorite, all-time favorite perennials that I'm going to make a little arrangement with today. I have a couple of hellebores that my husband and I just went on a day trip to Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, and we bought a couple of hellebores, and we bought some cute little pansies. This is Frizzle Sizzle. Look at that. Look how cute they are. Aren't they so cute? I'm glad you're here today. My name is Bobby. I garden in a zone 6B. This one here is called Hellebore Mont Blanc, and it starts out, when it first blooms, it starts out white, and then it turns to this green. Now you can see here that this is an older bloom. This is a mature bloom. It's an aged bloom. Um, this one here, this part here is actually the flower of the Hellebore, and it is a newer bloom and you can see it's white and then you can see this one is turned green. Your tag says as far as light exposure sun to part sun. Now we know that hellebores can grow in kind of a wide range of conditions. They can tolerate some shade but I've found that mine do flower the best in a little bit more sun but this time of year when the hellebores are flowering there's really no leaves on the trees so they're getting adequate amount of sun in my opinion if you have them in a more shady area. And then this one is a color you've probably seen. It starts out a little darker pink and then it opens up to a kind of a greeny pink. It's called uh, Viv Valeria. This is a pretty common one and when I say common I mean one that you can find pretty readily in most garden centers. So I'm not going to take these hellebores out of their containers because they're not going to be in here for super long. I just want a little winterish, early spring type container that I can set on my porch. And if I see that the temperatures are going to dip down really low in the night and in the wee hours of the morning, then I'll go ahead and just set this container in my greenhouse for the night. Because hellebores and pansies, when it dips down too cold, they kind of get really droopy. But then they perk right up once the weather starts warming up. So I'll just keep my eye on everything. But for now I have this old metal wash pan here. This was something that was here on the farm in one of the buildings. And I do have some drainage holes that I drilled in the bottom some time ago because I've used this a lot. So I'm just going to set these down and then I'm going to put some potting soil for the pansies. Then I think I'm going to put a couple of the tulip bulbs that we planted, the forced tulip bulbs, if you watch that video. And full honesty here. Um, they are pretty much, most of the bulbs are pretty much duds. I am not happy about that. And I said in the video that if these don't do well, it would be my fault. But really, I don't think it was my fault. I think it was the bulbs. I think buying pre-chilled bulbs is maybe not the best idea. I think if you want to pre-chill your own bulbs in that you buy in the autumn time, and then you pre-chill them for about 16 weeks, in your refrigerator, like in your crisper drawer where there's no other fruit, is the best way to go. I will not purchase pre-chilled bulbs again uh, because some of them are growing to little nubs and then they've just stopped. And you can tell when you look at them, they're just like, mm -mm, they're stunted. They're not going to do anything. So you know how you could tell that about a tulip? So I'll show you the pot where I'm going to dig out a few. You can see here, and if you look back and you watch the other video, you see where we planted these. But anyway, look, look here. See how this bulb was damaged to begin with. This bulb was damaged to begin with. So I went ahead and planted it anyway. And some of them, the flower stalks are bent over because they were that way when they came to me. And I thought, okay, well, they'll straighten out. I had these in darkness for over a week trying to uh, build their root system up. So I'm looking forward to see. I'm going to dig these three out, I think, and I'm going to put it, put them in here and just see what they will do. I want to see what the root system is like. I might dig one or two more out, depending on how much room I have. But I can see some little ones here that are just, they're just going to be duds. And all of the other clay pots that we planted together, pretty much the same. These have been under my grow lights for well over a week. And this is, these three are the best ones, and I don't even know if they're going to flower. So um, I cannot recommend buying pre-chilled bulbs. Even though I did a video on it, I wanted to see and wanted to show you guys and see for myself if it, you know, if they would work. But I can't recommend it. So I have some potting soil already moistened here that we were using in another project, and I've just kind of line these up with my hand. I'm going to put potting soil in around here 
and then plant these pansies and then maybe put a couple of those tulips and we'll go from there. And this potting soil, once I dismantle this little container arrangement, I can use, um, just stick it out in one of the garden beds or something like that after I take the pansies out and after I dismantle everything. So it's not really wasting it. I love this hellebore here. This one, if it's like some of the others of this particular variety, I have some that are very similar, but they're pink um, because I'm looking at the foliage. This one is a real, my pink one, like this one that has this type of foliage, really, really reseeds itself like everywhere. And I'm fine with that. seedlings take a long time to grow. That's why hellebores are so expensive to buy. If you just let them grow from seedlings like and self-seed themselves, they're gonna take a long time, several years before you actually see any flowers on those seedlings. So if you've ever questioned why are hellebores so expensive, that's why. They take a long time to grow on. I do have a couple of other, at least one, I think two other videos about growing hellebores. And um, I can, if I can remember to link those in the description, I will do that. Okay, so I got the potting soil in this pan. And before we start planting our pansies, I wanted to see how, what these, uh, what these tulips look like and what the root system looks like on them. So I'm going to just kind of gently pry this one out. Ah, yeah, look at the nice roots on that. You see those roots? That's what I wanted. I wanted them to root like that. And the bulb feels pretty nice, a little bit squishy. I've only watered them like once or twice since they came out of the darkness. But I'm gonna put these in the back just in case. Okay, let's get another one. And I'm trying not to disturb the roots. Yeah, see the roots on that one? So that looks pretty good. They look pretty good. All right, there's one more here that might be decent. Yeah, a few roots. Those first two had the best roots. You see just a couple roots on this one. Okay. Yeah, I've been pretty disappointed every day when I look at these and I'm like, mm. oh, well. See, this bulb here actually is kind of kind of rotted. It's really squishy. And it was probably one of the iffy ones when I put it in here. I was like, I'm not sure because they had already had a shoot on it. It already had a bloom stalk on it and it was broken and I didn't really think it was going to do anything. So yeah, it's not, it's not going to do anything. Okay. So I turned this back around to what I'm considering the front here and I'm going to plant some of these frizzle sizzle blue pansies. They're so sweet. Oh. Frizzle sizzle. Isn't that cute? And this isn't going to be extravagantly beautiful or, any, or anything. After all, it's in an antique uh, metal pot so it's not going to be anything fancy and I'm just packing these pansies in here because they're not going to be in here for super duper long uh, so they don't need a lot of room to grow or anything like that I'm just kind of packing them in here so they'll be nice and full looking this plant looks a little worse for wear, but it'll be okay. I have a little bit of room next to this tulip, and I'll stick this in here. I'm going to go ahead and stick the frizzle sizzle tag in just, just for kicks. So I'm just taking an old towel here, cleaning up a little bit um, around the container. And there we go. I was, I brought my um, moss, my bag of moss and the sheet moss and everything out. And I was gonna put the sheet moss in and around everything, but I don't think I need to. 
so we will save that for another project and I'll lift it up a little bit so you can see I put the tulips in the back so we'll see what they will do they may not do anything but it turned out kind of cute what do you think do you like that turned out kind of cute maybe this will help cure my spring fever a little bit and uh, just have a little something pretty to look at. I'm going to leave this in the greenhouse for a couple of days just to especially let the pansies kind of settle in, let the tulips kind of settle in a little bit. But anyway, there we go, all ready and all pretty. And I will plant these two hellebores out after I'm done with this. I'm not sure if I said that, but I will plant them out in one of my garden spaces. So I will have more hellebores to add to my collection. Thanks so much for joining me today, friends, and I hope you'll come back and join me in another video. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.